sometimes big things happen by chance. The result of circumstances and their impact is realized only in retrospect. This is what happened to us when we founded our first company, Mobileye. So in 1998, my partner, Professor Anush Yashua, gave a lecture at Toyota. My partner is one of the leading scientists in the world in computer vision. And during the lecture, one of the engineers asked him, tell me, Professor, is it possible to detect vehicle based on two cameras? And he intuitively said, yes, but why two cameras? A driver can drive with one eye. I believe it can be done with one camera. It just continued with the lecture without understanding back then that he laid a solution to one of the epidemics of the modern world, which is car accidents. After this lecture, we indeed founded Mobileye. It was 20 years ago. And today, Mobileye is the leading supplier in a field that's called ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. And we are pioneering today the autonomous driving. So with Mobileye technology, we have the potential to save many millions of lives and to prevent hundreds of millions of injuries, and all that based on artificial intelligence. And with our second company, Orcam, which we founded eight years ago, we believe we can improve lives of more than a billion people, also harnessing artificial intelligence. So during this show, I would like to show you how artificial intelligence can empower our lives and benefit humanity on a big scale. Let me start with Mobileye. Imagine a small camera that's situated behind the rearview mirror, looking forward, and constantly analyzing the scene in front of you, like a third eye. When I say analyzing the scene, it means that we can understand and detect vehicles in front of us. Pedestrians, traffic signs, traffic lights, lane marks, the green carpet that you see is a free space in front of the vehicle. More than 95% of the automakers adopted this technology. Majority of the automakers. And Mobileye today preparing the autonomous driving, which is not going to be just with one camera, but it's going to be multiple cameras around the vehicle, 360 degrees, with additional sensors like radar, leader, and other sensors. So our life is about to change with the introduction of autonomous vehicle. So if it's going to change, let's take a peek into the future, just to see some of the elements that are going to change. I believe that the change in our life with the introduction of autonomous vehicles is going to be in every aspect of our daily life, economically, personally, demographically, socially, you name it. It will start with shared mobility or car on demand. Regulators will give a geofence area within the cities where autonomous driving will be allowed. And we, the users, will just order a car from A to B. The car will stop near us, will take us to a public transportation in a very effective way. And when we get out of the public transportation, other car will wait for us. So all the rides will be very efficient, and we will use public transportation much more than we use today. Because it's going to be so efficient, there's going to be no logic to own a car within those cities. After all, we use car maybe 4% of our time. Most of the time, it sits in a parking lot. But autonomous vehicle, the utility will be close to 98%. So the number of cars will drop. Some claim to half and some claim to quarter. So the cities will look completely differently. If the commute and the ride is going to be cheaper and more effective, and we are not going to, wa to waste our time, by the way, we are going to save 400 billion driving hours. 
Instead of driving, we can do in the car whatever we do at home or at work. So because we're not wasting time, we will start to see demographical change. People will leave the centers of the city and go back to suburbia. But the most important element of it that we will reach eventually the utopia of safe roads without car accidents. Another great example of how artificial intelligence can benefit humanity is our second company, Orcom. In 2010, I remember my partner entered to my room and said, the technology is finally mature enough. And I said, mature enough for what? And only then he told me the story that when he completed his PhD in brain and, and cognitive sciences, his aunt congratulated him and said, great, now I can fix my poor vision. He smiled and said, yes, but I'm not this kind of doctor. He moved on, but never forget this episode. It was 30 years ago. Around 2010, the microprocessors grew stronger. The algorithms became sophisticated enough, allowing technology to reach the maturity on a human level. So we developed in Orcam this small device. This is the device. It snaps on a glass frame. Very simply, like this. So there's a camera in front and speaker at the other side. And it works offline, not connected to internet. So the, the privacy is fully kept. It works immediately. And this device is truly redef redefines everything you know about artificial vision. It is considered the most sophisticated wearable device today in the world. So let's look at a day in the life of Amy. It's a new day. The sun rises. The city is waking up. The streets come alive. And so does Amy. Amy, like all of us, doesn't like to get up, but she brushes her teeth, gets ready, and heads out to start her day. On Amy's way to the coffee shop, she stops at the bookstore. Greater than myself. And realizes she has to run. Time is 8.15 a.m. 10 Park Street. Believe in your selfie. At the coffee shop, Amy gets comfortable. Hot beverages. She orders coffee and a snack. Then she meets Mike. Mike. And Ellie. Ellie. And someone new. A young man is in front of you. Cute. But Amy, you came to the coffee shop to get some work done. After finishing some work, Amy stops at the grocery store. Cereal. Honey bunches. Milk. Soy milk. And dill pickles. Pickles? Now maybe a quick stop at her favorite shop for a little something, because you deserve it. Dark blue. Pink. $100. What? Amy finally arrives back home. Now she can relax. Take off her glasses. Sit down and have a drink. Ouch. This is the challenging reality of over 350 million partially sighted and blind people. And organ technology based on artificial intelligence can improve their daily activity substantially. When I say improve, in the morning when you wake up, 
you want to match your clothing. So it will tell you what is the colors. When you walk down the street, it will help you with the orientation, with street signs. While shopping, we'll identify millions of products, their prices, and description on the product. At the register, we'll help you with the money notes and credit cards. We'll tell you the number of the bus and train that you are waiting for. And a big part of our life is socializing. So we'll recognize faces of your close people. But maybe the most important feature is capability to read. You know, when we started the company, we interviewed hundreds of potential users to understand what is their needs. I thought intuitively that being independent will be the primary need. Surprisingly to me, more than 90% said we want the ability to read. You know, in order, in order to understand it, I did a small experiment on myself. I prevented myself from reading for one day. After an hour, I understood how challenging our life if we cannot read. I suggest you to do it for five minutes, you understand. All our world composed of written material on a smartphone, computers, documents, street signs, newspaper, everywhere around us. But if this device and this technology capable to read, we can reach additional segments in the world. For example, dyslexic people. There are 10 to 15% of our population are dyslexic, where 3 to 5% are severe dyslexia. Or people with disorder like aphasia, tens of millions. But maybe the biggest segment that this technology can help is people with reading fatigue, like senior citizens. They still can read, but tired very quickly. Or professionals that read a lot during the day, like doctors, lawyers, or students, so we can boost their capability to read during the day. So if you combine all of these populations together, it adds up to more than a billion potential users that can use this technology. For people who are partially sighted and blind, we are not just settling to meet their needs. We go beyond their independence. We give them value that empowers them. And the rest of our users, this kind of technology, is an, an amplif a forceful amplifier to their daily activity. I would like to invite a very special girl, Julia, that came specially to this event from Porto Alegre, all the way. And I want to ask her how it changed her life. Julia, please come. Hello, Julia. So, for how long are you using our device? I use the eh, Oculus Arcan for five months. And how did it change your life? Tell us your experience. Now I can recognize the face of some of my friends, read the books, participate in activities in time real, and many other things. Read the cardápio in a restaurant. I see that you brought a book with you. This is the book that you are reading. Can you show us how you read? Yes, I read. Here we will be. My father, my mother, 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 my and it will continue to read page after page. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you. I opened my presentation with the realization that artificial intelligence can empower our life and benefit humanity on a big scale. Both companies, Mobila and Orcam, are great examples of that. 
But I want to leave you with a philosophical question. As a human beings, are we really ready for this change? My personal feeling is that we still have a long way to go. The number of casualties caused by human error is outrageous. For example, we the drivers responsible for close to 95% of car accidents. And the numbers are staggering. 1.5 million fatalities, and on top of it, 50 million are injured. And we, got off, we kind of got used to it. But if it's caused by a robotic car, it's unacceptable by the society. So we apply a double standard. I think it's about time to embrace technology with more confidence, and then we can enjoy the benefits of artificial intelligence. And on a personal level, I feel privileged to have this opportunity to take part in this change and influence life of so many people. Thank you.